My name is uh, Sam, and I'm going to talk to you guys about something super exciting. Uh, how to deal with garbage. So, uh, so this is probably a familiar face uh, here on the internet at all. Uh, it's pretty much how I'm known. It's head over my face. You can see why now. I want to talk to you today about memory issues in JavaScript uh, and how that relates to the performance of your web application. Uh, the pain that we have all experienced in learning how to debug these kind of issues. And uh, with that, how to profile for leaks in your application and how to automate the process on CI. So these are all really cool buzzwords. So we're like, yeah, great ideas. So let's, let, me, let me step into your life. Let's, let's experience what being a developer is like. On my, my repo, I get this awesome issue. The first issue, I'm really excited that someone opened it. Um, app becomes slow after leaving open for 10 days. Oh, cool. So I say, oh, um, OK, so how do I reproduce this? I leave my app open for 10 days. And then I try and you know, move the mouse. It's slow. Yeah, so I was like, I don't know what to do. Close. Thank you. Thanks. Um, um, won't fix. Works as intended. OK, so the next week, I get this email. Um, please help app crashing every month. <sighs> and so I, I don't know what to do. Um, I say, oh, cool. And you know, this guy obviously CC'd my manager. And <laughs> so he. Bangs on my door. Says, hey, you um, clearly like need to fix this. So I say, oh, OK, great. So uh, I say, oh, oh how, do I, how do I even reproduce this, the first thing? Like I leave the app open, and it's slow, or it crashes. But for like a month, or a week, or I just click things, and then wait a long time. I, I don't even know what to do. So I go to Google. And I type in a slow JavaScript app or memory fix app JavaScript leak. Uh, how does um, memory work? Uh, and I get some sweet pages. I get this gray one from Microsoft. And I get this one from 2011 that has pictures and a little tombstone. And I get one from Google. And I'm like, this is real. Look, look at that. That's a great little chart. Um, cascading anonymous functions. Um, so I read these, and you've, you've all read them. Like you say, oh, I understand this. So uh, with this new knowledge that I have from these pages, I go, uh, and I open, I hit command option I or something, go to the pro profile tab, timeline, yeah. I click that record button, and then I get this screen, and I say, oh. <laughs> And say, oh, OK. Um, oh, profile, yeah. So I want to profile my JavaScript. So let me profile it. So I profile it, and I get uh, this. I say, that's cool. That looks cool. <laughs> the manager pounds on the door and says, oh, you fix it? I said, oh, yeah, it's not a problem. <laughs> So uh, let's step back. Uh, so to uh, sort of understand the problem in the first place, we should like understand maybe how memory works. But you're like, all right, JavaScript. That, why do I have to care about memory? There's like a V8. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, you're like, oh, I really want to get better for the third time and get another email. And so you search like memory JavaScript, and then you get this picture. I was like, ah. Oh. I see that six is overlapping with the red. That must be extra bad. <laughs> Duh, come on. So like, I mean, this makes a lot of sense. We all understand. It's perfectly clear. OK. Let's take another step back. Uh, I want to talk trimming the memory tree, so like understanding how the garbage collector works. 
It's like, why do I care about that? V8 does it, JavaScript, but you probably should know. So here's, like our, here's your app. It's great. It looks like a tree. It's a bunch of circles. It's a graph again. So like, let's imagine that you delete some things in your app. Uh, so we have little red slashes. And then uh, along comes uh, the garbage collector, and he's like, hey, who's not attached to that main object? And it just gets rid of them. So great. You now understand how garbage collection works. See? It's super clear. <laughs> So uh, a good way to think about this is like graphs that can't be collected are memory leaks. Oh, okay, graphs that cannot be collected are memory leaks. So cool. Okay, so here's your app. Um, you were really excited when you wrote it. So you made an app object. This hangs on the window. It's got this really cool array of views, and then you have a, my view and my and your views array. But then you're like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if from my view I can get back to my app object? So you attach that little underscore because it's a private little, you don't want to use it normally, but it's there. Um, and then you're like, oh, let me clean up my view. I'm going to call like whatever, destroy or unmount or whatever. Um, but then your view never goes away. And you're like, what? What's happening? So it's because like you have a reference to the app and then your app has a reference to the view. So the only way to get rid of it is by deleting it from the views array, which you obviously forgot to do and with the reference. So you've now introduced like a memory leak. <sighs> kind of. But then you're like, wait, this is stupid, Sam. I use a framework. It does this for me. Right? Um, not always. So like you, um, the people that write frameworks are humans typically, and uh, they don't, they also have about the same understanding as we do about how memory works. <laughs> so, a lot, of, a lot of leaks. So, um, Angular, right? Um, here's a good example. This is real. Uh, they're like, hey, I'm gonna make a directive. If you wanna hit the escape, it's gonna call scope.apply. Obviously, uh, but because they're attaching a key down listener uh, to the window has scope access, uh, they retain this directive. So with like Angular and Ember and React and whatever library you're using, uh, when you do this and the framework's like, oh, we re-render aggressively and do patching of your DOM, uh, these sort of leaks turn into like massive, massive memory leaks really quick. Because every time you make a change, it re-renders it, and it's terrible. It upgrades and downgrades. So, congratulations, this is a memory leak. Okay, so now we have some understanding about maybe like, what a leak kind of looks like, uh, and it slows down your app, because you know, leaks are bad, uh, and how the garbage question in tree works. So, I'm gonna step you through my process for identifying memory leaks. Uh, the first thing I do is, in your app, Imagine your app, got it? Okay. Identify some clean action sets. What does this look like? Okay, on to do MVC, you know, when I add and remove a to do, I don't expect there to be anything retained in the DOM or any objects still sticking around. So that's like clean. When I open and close a modal, I don't think that there should be new nodes every single time and it should grow and grow and grow. Probably clean. Um, so, got your clean action. Now we have to measure what is actually happening. So there's two tools that I use, timeline recording in Chrome DevTools and heap snapshot in DevTools. So this is what a good timeline looks like for like opening and closing a menu or adding and removing it to do. You have your action, which you know, I drew a nice box around. Uh, <laughs> and then you have uh, where DC happens, where you see the blue line, which is your heap and your node count in green sort of drop off to zero. So this is like ideal clean action land, everything's good. Um, this looks more like what most people's apps look like. Uh, you kind of add, and add, and add, and then you force a garbage collection, and, and everything stays nice and high. So, um, it's good. That's a good sign in your app. Uh, and then I typically, I've identified this leak. 
So I go into that heap snapshot mode and take these snapshots before my action, after my action. And then there's a little drop down menu. You can say, hey, give me the diff in between these two. So oh, that's cool. And then you get that really cool view again that maybe is kind of hard to understand. But it looks like this normally. And then you expand some objects and you see some red and you're like, hey, that's terrible. OK, great. It almost makes sense. And then you look. <laughs> If you click on it, you get the retain path, so you can sort of trace it back up. So these are like the tools that I use. Um, then you look at the results and you say, hey, did the counts go up? What objects are sticking around? And is this expected? So like any good developer, you're like, oh, I can patch this. So comment out most of your code. Uh, rerun it. You know, does it work or not? So repeat, repeat your measuring process, and then you're good to go. OK, so that was good. And that sounded like perfect. And you watch these videos from Paul Irish and everyone is like, oh, just do this. And it works every time. And it's so easy. Look, it's exactly this. Um, but in the real world, your experience is probably like mine. You're like, I don't know what I'm looking at. So let's actually look at something real and show you what this process looks like. All right. So I have this. Uh, this is a real leak, too. I was fixed. It's great. So here's the Material Design Light app, and they have this menu component. So I'm in DevTools here, and I have a timeline open. So I'm going to do a recording uh, and just open and close the menu. Pretty, pretty normal stuff. Just, just go nuts. Cool. Uh, and then there's this little trash icon that you can just sort of click, and this forces garbage collection. OK. So let's finish this. Oh. So this looks weird, right? Like we see our node count going up, or our listener count going up. And then I click GC a bunch, it drops way down, uh, except for the listener count stays pr pretty high. So at this point, I'm like, oh, this is probably bad. Yeah. So I go into that next step where I use the heap snapshots. Uh, so let me show you how easy it is. Uh, so here's this other tab, profiles. Cool, good name. Um, so uh, I take a snapshot. That's it. And that gives me the current state of the heap. So great. Huge, gigantic object. I can look at stuff, V8 internal stuff. OK. So like before, I go and uh, sort of open and close my menu a bunch. It's like, good menu. And I know what this is doing, like tons and tons of listeners just getting added. That's good. So I go back to timeline. Uh, I click this GC button a bunch again, force some garbage. OK, good. Take another snapshot. OK, now we have two. So if I drop down into uh, looking at the diff, uh, I will see that I have, I have uh, these functions here inside of here. It's like, oh, this is weird, native bind. Huh. And so you're thinking, oh, native bind, yeah. That's native. I don't have to worry about it. But then maybe you think about it some more. You're like, wait, native bind. Oh, it's one of those ES5 features. Bind? Yeah. OK. Um, and then I hover over this randomly, and I say, oh, whoa, look, it's, 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 there's a code, an anonymous function. Native bind anonymous function. That sounds like my code. <laughs> so you click on it. Oh, oh, weird. So we end up. Uh, here in this add animation end listener underscore function. So they, oh, they're, they're adding an event listener. And is, that's a bind. That's a native bind. Oh, man, I found it. OK. So you can look at it and sort of be like, hey, I bet if I removed that listener, things wouldn't leak. And you'd be right. So identifying and going through this process uh, it's pretty simple when you do it step by step. Like, I know it can be crazy intimidating and really hard, but like right there, that's that's a real world example of like three steps to identify a leak uh, in your app. And this would work, you know, imagine your app, everybody's app has those clean sort of actions. Open a modal, close a modal, submit your payment information. Yeah. Leaks are bad there. Okay. Like maybe, maybe you're buying into it now, maybe not. You're like, this seems way too hard. 
Like nobody on my team would ever do this. Yeah, maybe, it's probably true. Um, but like this sounds like a good idea. So what if I could do automated performance smoke testing? That would be awesome. Just like run it on CI and everything works. Whoa, wouldn't that be crazy? It's like dot slash leak test. That'd be so good. Okay, so I made this. Um, uh, this is a real thing now. Uh, it's called drool. Um, if you type that into Google, it's, it's in the results. Uh, third page, I think, it's good. Um, but basically, uh, this, what this library does is it uh, does those actions just like we did. It sets up your web page. It runs an action over and over and over again, uh, forcing garbage collection between each one. And then it has an assert block where you can be like, hey, uh, did my node count go up? Did my event count go up? Yes, no, maybe? And you get a test result from that. So you can basically identify a memory leak in your app, write a test to measure the counts of your app, and then put that on CI, and if anyone messes up in the future, your test will go red and they have to fix it. So it's a pretty solid process. And these are implemented across, like, Todo MVC has it for every single framework, uh, like Material Design Lite, like we just looked at, has it. Um, and it's caught a crazy number of leaks. Uh, in frameworks too, which is cool. Uh, so, I want to point out the fact that what I just showed you, like it means that you can do memory analysis, you can automate memory performance, and you can prevent memory leaks. It's not so scary. Uh, I know the resources that are out there are like really confusing because I read them all like five times. Uh, but it's about having a systematic process to go through. You look at what your app is doing, you test, you repeat, and you measure, and it's, it's straightforward. So that's all I have, guys. Thank you.